Hello and welcome to episode 112 of Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty. Of course, I am your host, Rick Doherty. On today's show, Sarah Says will be returning to finish the conversation we started in episode 109, which aired for the first time on March 2nd. There's a lot that is wrong with Tomorrowland in both Disneyland and Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World. With Tron coming to WDW, it's making some of those problems more glaring. Sarah and I will go over those issues in excruciating detail. Before we get started, we only have a few more days left in our fundraising drive for Boys and Girls Club locations in the Orlando area. We're asking for $20 gift cards to Dick's Sporting Goods or Five Below to be sent to Orlando Ball Drop 1971 at gmail.com by Monday, March 27th. A lot of us have put down money this month on basketball brackets or for fantasy baseball teams. Yes, we love theme parks, but many of us also love sports. Let's light that passion in a new generation of kids. Earlier this week, we already passed the seven hundred dollar threshold if 15 people grab a 20 dollar gift card for dick sporting goods or five below and send it to orlando ball drop 1971 at gmail.com that will give us one thousand dollars that is a huge but achievable goal the links can be found on the pinned tweet on my twitter at Rick underscore ear. I'm going to do a much more thorough thank you list next week, but there are some people who really came through already. Leah is the twin sister of our good friend, the Sarah Enigma. She was also the very first person to send us a gift card. Justin Monorail is the host of the Passholder Lounge podcast, but we don't consider ourselves competition. We're part of the same community, and Justin made a big donation. Adam of the Mouse and More podcast also came through by helping us get a bunch of balls. Aaron, who is at WDW Words on Twitter, stepped up to the plate with a huge donation. Steve was in college when I was just in high school. We both started with the same rock radio station in central Pennsylvania. We met over 25 years ago, and we played together on adult rec league basketball teams throughout my 20s. Out of the blue, Steve gave us a large gift card. Please join them by sending a gift card of your own to Orlando Ball Drop 1971 at gmail.com by Monday, March 27th. I'm going to promote this until it is burned into your brains. So thank you all so much for your patience. Right now, we're bringing back the one and only Sarah Says. When we left off in our conversation about what is wrong with Tomorrowland and Walt Disney World and Disneyland, we were talking about the people mover. Sarah is upset that she no longer has a people mover on the West Coast. Oh, man. Yeah. So we unceremoniously got axed of the people mover due to a little very short-lived ride called rocket rods rocket rods was great in theory it used the track from the people mover and shot you around the same track at a very fast pace i rode it a couple times um it was always an incredibly long wait because it always broke down because you can't use a people mover track for what they wanted to do i mean a for effort f for how they actually did it. (laughs) I know we've talked about this before, and I honestly think the only way we could get people mover back is if they tore out the entire track because of how damaged it was by rocket rods and rebuild the whole thing. They would have to refurbish that entire area of track to put the people mover back because otherwise it's nothing can run on that right now. It's just an eyesore of these. I mean, it's not even on the map. If you look at a map of Disneyland, you don't even see all the eyesore of track that is above and all of the pillars and everything that are still there supporting this broken, broken piece of history. (laughs) So, I mean, either they need to do a huge refurb and put people mover back or they just need to tear it all out because it is ridiculous. (laughs) It's ridiculous and it is ugly. (laughs) 
So I think this is such a tough decision for Disney to make about Tomorrowland because it is a ride that once people get into Disneyland and they ride it, they will love it. But it is not going to bring one new customer. Nobody is going to say the people mover is why they went to Disneyland on a Disneyland vacation. Right. So if I'm Bob Iger and I run Disney, which the good Lord willing, one day I will run Disney. Actually, I have no desire to do that whatsoever. (laughs) That was completely and totally a joke. I don't know if I would put forth the economic investment that it would take to do this the right way. So I don't know if we do ever get it, but there have been hints, there have been talks, so maybe we do get it. Disneyland is a whole different beast. It is not just vacationers. They do Mm -hmm. have to cater a little more to the annual pass holder. Magic Key, the new annual pass system, has not been popular with the Disneyland regulars, so maybe this is a way that Disney can sort of throw them a bone Like, hey, you don't like the annual pass system, but did you know that you're getting the people mover back? And then that would excite everybody for a little while and Twitter would calm down for a bit. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that is a whole other episode that I can tell you the background on what they're thinking about pass holders (laughs) at Disneyland. (laughs) Yes, we could have a whole conversation about that. And maybe that is a good episode for some time in the future, the different ways that annual pass holders are treated at the two different resorts. But recently I was talking to, I always joke with you that her name is Canada Sarah, the Sarah Enigma who's been on the show. And she said to me, she's like, listen, I don't want to sound like a bad Disney fan, but what's the big deal about the people mover? I've never done it. And everybody says that they love it so much. And of course, my first reaction was get down here right now as soon as you can (laughs) (laughs) because you have to ride the people mover because it's the greatest thing ever. But when I was describing why I liked it, I didn't think I was going to be able to put it into words. I thought, well, it's something you have to experience. But then when I was talking about coming around that corner and seeing the reveal of Cinderella Castle from up at that level and going past Tron. First, it was the Tron construction, and everybody enjoyed going past the Tron construction, and now Tron is constructed, and it just looks beautiful, and you go past this beautiful new ride, and then you go inside Space Mountain, and you hear the screams in the dark from the people riding Space Mountain. It really is an awesome experience, and I was able to explain it to somebody when I thought this was something that you had to experience to understand, but I don't think you do. I think that this stands alone, and the People Mover is just a really, really good ride. It's not too hard to get the chance to ride it. You get great views, great pictures. If you're tall like me, you can kick up your feet and put them on the seat in front of you and just relax. You can be productive. You can feel like you're riding a ride and that you're not wasting your time in the theme park while also getting a much needed rest. I can't say enough about the people mover. Now, a ride that I think is absolute garbage. (laughs) And I just realized very, very recently that I do not like this ride at all. It took me a long time to come to terms with that is Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin. There's a couple reasons I don't like this ride. One reason is there is an exponentially better version of the exact same thing at Hollywood Studios. When we talk about the version at Disneyland, there's a better version over at California Adventure in Toy Story Mania or Toy Story Midway Mania. That's basically a Toy Story themed shooting game, which is what Space Ranger Spin is at Magic Kingdom. I find that it breaks down a lot. I feel like the guns, for lack of a better term, are sticky. I feel like I'm dirty when I get off the ride. It is not well themed. It has a carnival ride kind of vibe to it. The only thing that's impressive about it at Magic Kingdom is is the Buzz animatronic when you're in line 
and the Buzz animatronic at the end of the ride. Now, this is a little different in Disneyland and a little better in Disneyland. So why don't you describe that version of what is essentially the same ride? Yeah, I was about to ask you, is it the same ride, but with a different name? Because I've never done Space Ranger Spin, but I have done Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters at Disneyland because it either has a very long wait or it has no wait. (laughs) But you go through because you're being basically recruited to be be one of what are whatever they're called rangers like <laughs> like buzz lightyear so as you walk through it's like you're going through being recruited and they do have a buzz lightyear animatronic which is pretty cool um and then when you get on you're fighting emperor zerg and you have the blasters and you can move the car back and forth and you shoot and you're basically just trying to get a really high score to be the best oh space ranger that's the word the best space ranger in your little group. So yeah, I mean, to me, it's nothing like fantastic and wonderful. It's fun. And when you can actually hit great targets, it's great, but otherwise it's loud. (laughs) So the Disneyland version is better. You are able to lift up your shooting device. Oh, you can't do that on the other one. You can't do that on the one in magic kingdom. You kind of spin your vehicle around to point it at things And it just doesn't really have the same vibe. I just don't like this because I feel like there is something better in the same resort. Yeah. I would much rather do Toy Story Mania, which is just another one of those S tier, maybe an A tier, but definitely right up there attractions. Yeah. Now I want to talk about something that's at both Disneyland and Walt Disney World, but does not appear in Walt Disney World's Tomorrowland. And something that I don't know if it fits in Disneyland anymore, and that's Star Tours. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. What are your thoughts on Star Tours being in Tomorrowland in Disneyland? It's kind of hard for me because I can experience Star Tours anytime I want in Walt Disney World. So when I'm at Disneyland, I never even think about it. I think I've done it once at Disneyland. It's the exact same experience that it is in Walt Disney World. It's not the future. Literally, those movies start a long, long time ago in the galaxy far, far away. So now that Star Wars Galaxy's Edge exists... I'm starting to think that Star Tours and by extension Star Wars Launch Bay might not belong in Disneyland's Tomorrowland anymore. What do you feel about that? So I feel like when Star Tours was put in, Tomorrowland, it's almost like it just needs to be rethemed to Spaceland <laughs> because it uh to me, I feel it fits in Tomorrowland because everything is space themed. I don't look at it as the future anymore because ever since we lost Carousel of Progress and it became Star Wars Launch Bay, um, which has not been open since COVID. <laughs> um, I I think it does. But we also, um, in Disneyland, don't have a Hollywood Studios where it totally makes sense that it's in Hollywood Studios because it has the giant at outside. It has all the really cool stuff to make it look like part of the movies where we don't have that. We just have the facade and you go in and as you're walking through the line, you get to see C-3PO, you get to see R2-D2. And it's not as blatant as what of what it is out front as it is in Hollywood Studios. So I personally think it's totally fine in Tomorrowland. I love Star Tours. I actually was my first visit ever to Disneyland was not long after it had opened. And we stood in those five, six hour lines to ride it because my dad and my uncle are like hardcore Star Tours fans, or I'm sorry, not Star Tours, Star Wars fans. And so I remember riding it when it first opened in the eighties and it's standing in line forever. But, but I feel like because we don't have somewhere else to put it and on the West coast, it's always been part of Spaceland. <laughs> so I'm going to refer to Tomorrowland now forever. <laughs> um, that it fits for us, but it would not ever fit in Magic Kingdom. Absolutely not. It sort of has the same problem in Hollywood Studios, where now that Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is there, it feels a little redundant. And I do understand that that original version that opened in the 80s, like I remember when Star Tours opened 
back then at MGM Studios, and it was a must ride. It wasn't 3D. It didn't make you sick in your stomach every time you wrote it. And it was a much better version, in my humble opinion. Yeah. However, you are more of the Disneyland connoisseur, so I'm going to accept your opinion on this and say that it gets to stay. What do you feel about Launch Bay, then? Launch Bay needs to go. It is such a waste of that building. I'm not going to lie. I... I think it was a good idea when we were waiting for Galaxy's Edge to have Launch Bay there, but now Galaxy's Edge is open and now it needs to be used for something else. I mean, it was a bummer when they took Carousel of Progress out uh, because that was kind of a cool thing that was in both. And now it's, I mean, gosh, what have I seen it turn into? It's it was Carousel of Progress. Then it was something else where they had this like house of the future inside of it for a while that was sponsored by Microsoft. And you went in and you could like have touch screens on your house and weird things like that. And then it turned into Launch Bay. And basically been going in. I mean, other than there being a few things like art wise of Star Wars, a teeny little shop that had some just random like stuff for the new movies and then the meet and greets that you didn't like, I didn't even realize there were meet and greets in there the first time I went in there because it had a little sign that said, you know, Chewbacca this way, Darth Vader this way, but you would have to go and then you would walk through these other hallways to get to where you need to go. So it wasn't like it was blatantly obvious. It just looked like, Hey, we're just going to use this space until galaxy's edge opens. (laughs) So you mentioned Carousel of Progress, and that is something at Magic Kingdom that I absolutely love. I don't want them to ever get rid of it, (laughs) but I do think that we need to change up Carousel of Progress because even with some of the new additions, they have adjusted the final scene a number of times, but it goes from the turn of the 20th century to the 20s, to the 40s, to I guess what they're trying to consider the 90s. (laughs) And I think it might be better if it went from the turn of the 20th century, maybe to the 30s, and then you went to the 60s, and then you went to the 90s or something like that. And when they created that last scene, a lot of those things were fairly current and we didn't know how they were going to age. But now you can make those jokes the, oh, he's never going to make it. It's never going to fly. Like you can make those jokes about the internet and you Mm -hmm. can make those jokes about DVD players or whatever. But I feel like they just want this to be in cruise control as something that eats people during the day and they don't want to really put the time into it. And it deserves it because it is Walt Disney's carousel of progress. It was Walt's idea for the 1964 World's Fair, and they should really give it the love it deserves. I've even heard people saying, why don't you go from the turn of the century to the 20s to the 40s and then just end with the moon landing and have that be the progress that gets covered there? And then you're not trying to show things that are modern, but you show like this pinnacle of the contributions of humans towards science, that one moment that literally we call it a moonshot moment where society achieved this huge thing. That would also be good. I just think that next scene needs to change. And I have no idea why when they updated the father's animatronic in the new version, it had to look exactly like Norm MacDonald. Like that's weird, (laughs) right? I don't know why he looks like Norm MacDonald. One final note on Carousel of Progress. Disney, you need to sell that new sweatshirt from Progress University that they put on the daughter in that final scene. You would sell so many versions of that sweatshirt. I would have three just in case. (laughs) And it doesn't even get cold in Florida. Staying in Magic Kingdom with something that is not available in Disneyland, and that is Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor. I don't really know why this is in Tomorrowland. Like, if there's something that doesn't fit the theme of Tomorrowland, it is Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor, which is a comedy show with the monsters from Monsters, Incorporated. I guess at some point, Disney just decided Tomorrowland was Pixar Land. (laughs) They even have the Merida meet and greet 
in fantasy land, but basically right across from Tomorrowland. Like you can see Tomorrowland from the Merida meet and greet, which is funny because that's the only Pixar princess. But True. getting back to Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor, while I don't think it necessarily fits the theme, I'm okay with it being here. Kids love it. It's a way to get off your feet for a half hour, be in the air conditioning. It might not be a whole half hour, but you get off your feet. You're in the AC. It's funny. Kids can enjoy it. Adults can enjoy it because basically it's dad jokes. So... Everybody will think it's funny in some form or fashion. I'm okay with it being there. I have no, this is not the problem with Tomorrowland in Magic Kingdom. What is a problem is they still haven't done anything with the building that used to be either extraterrestrial alien attack or it was Stitch's Great Escape for a while. And that's just sitting empty right now. That's what I was actually just going to ask you because we don't have Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor. We have Turtle Talk with Crush over at uh, California Adventure, which I'm guessing is very similar. Mine is jokes. You can just talk to the turtle. But um, I was wondering, like, where is that in Tomorrowland? Because I've never experienced it because I'm just not a big fan of those kind of shows. But I was like, is it in the same space as extraterrestrial? I can't do it either. Extraterrestrial alien encounter and Stitch's Great Escape? Or is it? different than that so now you're telling me that whole space where that absolutely horrific terrifying ride was is still empty <laughs> okay a couple things to unpack about what you just said <laughs> first of all we also have turtle talk with crush oh. at walt disney world it is in the seas with nemo and friends pavilion oh cool so okay. that's really cool that that is there and yes it is nice. a similar function if you were to walk into Tomorrowland from Main Street USA, you would take that main right turn and go mm -hmm. under the sign. Okay. It would be on your right before you got to Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Gotcha. Okay. So there's a theater there, and that is where you can see Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor. As far as the former Stitch's Great Escape building... That used to be a Stitch meet and greet. Anybody who follows me on Twitter, my profile pic is me with Stitch. That was taken in the old queue for Stitch's Great Escape. But they have not done anything with that in a very, very long time. And that is space that's definitely going to waste. Now, we're going to move back to the West Coast. This is going to be the last thing we discuss. We're not really talking about restaurants and things like that in this version of what is wrong with Tomorrowland. <laughs> Though we do have some empty space now that I'm thinking about it, like you're talking about with that, where Honey, I Shrunk the Audience used to be and Captain EO, and now they are both gone and we have a big empty space, so. <laughs> they could do what they do in Epcot and just show Pixar shorts in it. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> So in Tomorrowland at Disneyland, we have what used to be 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, but why don't you describe what it is now, Sarah? So now it is the Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage. So it went from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea to Submarine Voyage, and then from then closed for a really long time, and we just had a weird lagoon. And then it turned into the Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage. So it basically was very similar to Submarine Voyage that I knew as a child, um, except for now it's Nemo-themed, and there's this absolutely terrifying part with the anglerfish that you get really, really close to the window, and you're like, what is that? Bam, it hit, it's an animatronic thing, like right in your face. And I will not lie that I did hit my face on the, the little window when <laughs> my sister went on it because it scared the bejesus out of me. It was terrifying. It was so scary. But yeah, so historically, this was like a cool lagoon and it had summaries. It had live mermaids at one point that would just sit there and interact with people. And now it is a submarine voyage again, which is great when you're a kid. Like I loved it when I was a kid, but as an adult riding it, it's cramped. It smells bad in there because there is no ventilation in a submarine. <laughs> and and it just, yeah, it's and it's not Tomorrowland. I could totally understand if they said it was part of Fantasyland, but it's not. It is Tomorrowland. <laughs> so it's like. So yeah. I am absolutely shocked that this reopened 
yeah. after the COVID closures. I thought this oh, was totally. done. I thought it was dead in the water, pun 100% intended. When you talk about it being hot and cramped and sticky, I always joke that when I was a kid, it felt like I always got the seat next to a sweaty fat guy. And then I remembered, <laughs> oh yeah, I went with my father. So I did always have a seat next to a sweaty fat guy, but it is very, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. There's a story that Michael Eisner really wanted to keep 20,000 leagues under the sea in magic kingdom. And he went to go ride it. And the cast members who were responsible for putting him on one of the submarines intentionally picked the worst, most leaky, stinky, hot, sweaty submarine they had available because even the cast members working it wanted Michael <laughs> Eisner to stop wanting this ride to stay in fantasy land. So I do think that this is not long for Disneyland and you kind of want this to disappear for two mm -hmm. reasons. And it gets back to something we talked about at the beginning of our conversation. Totally. Well, side note really quick before I get to that is I think the best part of that ride is when they were rebuilding it and the wall that was up all the way around and they had the seagulls sitting on top of it and all day they went mine, mine. Like, and they were little <laughs> animatronic seagulls. It was the best. That was like literally the best part. Okay. So my, what I think needs to happen <laughs> that I mentioned a little earlier with Tron is I think they need to wipe out the submarines. They need to wipe out Autopia and they can build Tron. That is my theory. I think it is the perfect space. If they get rid of all of that, it will open up plenty of space for us to have Tron. It will fit with the Tomorrowland theme and you won't have two weird attractions that aren't really that popular anymore, aren't a COVID risk or illness in general risk sitting in a tin can. <laughs> or, and it's not that weird in between because both of those rides, like I said earlier, especially Nemo, it literally crosses into Fantasyland. So half of the ride, you are in Tomorrowland. The other half, you are in Fantasyland. So just get rid of it. Make that whole space Tron and we'll be good. <laughs> And I guess we didn't mention the monorail, but the monorail is oh, yeah. perfect. That new 100th anniversary wrap is just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Chef's kiss, no notes on the monorail in Tomorrowland nope. at Disneyland. Sarah says, thank you so much for being here. This was a great conversation. I think that a lot of Disney fans are frustrated with Tomorrowland in Disneyland and Walt Disney World. So hopefully they got the chance to vent a little and daydream with us here on the podcast. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And hey, if you have any great ideas, you should tell us on Twitter. We can do another episode about it. But no, thank you for having me. This was a great one. Like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, yes. and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> After the beginning of the calendar year was so busy for Sarah Says, it has been great to have her back on the podcast for some interesting talks. She will be back next month so that we can finally take a deep dive into World Showcase in Epcot. I've been wanting to really discuss all of the ins and outs of World Showcase for over two years of this podcast. Find Sarah Says on Twitter at Sarah Says 84. You can follow me on Twitter at Rick underscore ear, Instagram at Rick Doherty TGTT, and TikTok at Tall Guy Talks Travel. Please also make sure to subscribe to the Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty YouTube channel. We're getting a lot more views than we have subscribers. So it would really help us if we could fix that and get those two numbers looking a little more similar. Of course, we're also collecting those gift cards to buy basketballs and soccer balls for kids. Before Monday, March 27th, please pick up a $20 gift card to Five Below or Dick's Sporting Goods and send it to Orlando Ball Drop 1971 at gmail.com. We've already started picking up the balls but we would love to top the $1,000 mark. It would go a long way to showing that Disney adults are not just spoiled brats who spend all of their time in theme parks. We actually get together as a community and we try to help kids. We try to help our community. It is well within our reach to get that $1,000 goal 
Thank you so much to everybody who has already donated. This has been episode 112 of Tall Guy Talks Travel with Rick Doherty. Join us next week when our other magnificent Sarah will be returning to the show. The Sarah Enigma is going to talk about attractions at Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World that have minimal weights. What rides are worth the quick cues and which rides could be a walk on and still not be worth it. Find out next Thursday. Until then, have a great week.